Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Ari and this is my 1970s TBR. Can you believe it's already August? Like this month or this year seems to go by so fast yet so slow at the same time. <laughs> so I start off every one of my decades TBRs for my century reads with a history lesson and the 1970s is actually probably going to be a short one. Most of the 1970s are just kind of a continuation of the 1960s. Gay rights, women's rights, and environmental movements are the real big thing. Mostly marginalized people are still fighting for their rights. I mean, it's 2020 and marginalized people are still fighting for their rights, so I figure this is going to be a recurring trend for the rest of the year. <laughs> um, but for the 1970s we're adding environmental movements. People are still protesting the Vietnam War and the major event, at least in America of the 1970s, was the Watergate scandal early in the decade where President Nixon basically got caught I don't remember. I wasn't born yet, but it's something about he was trying to, or he hired people to break into the Democratic, uh, like, offices to somehow rig the election for, or like, his re-election or something like that. Um, he got caught doing it and resigned because he was going to be impeached. <laughs> It just seems like, I, I know, like, I grew up hearing about, like, the big Watergate scandal, but, like, reading up on history, it just seems so tame compared to our current batshit president. <laughs> so, I don't know, wrong generation, I guess. There is a group called the New Right that is trying to bring back the conservative ism-ness? What is that word? But trying to make America be conservative again for the like basically they didn't like the 1960s they want to go back to 1950s. It happens all the time. The other big thing that everybody should probably remember or at least associate with the 1970s is disco. Uh, 1970s was a generation of disco, lots of cocaine and heroin use, and big bell-bottom pants. As far as literature in the 1970s go, it was kind of all over the place, um, which makes sense as publishing becomes easier. Major topics are racism, criminal nonfiction, irrelevance and satire, think like Hunter S. Thompson for that to make more sense. Uh, non-fiction books about sex. Uh, <laughs> women are being able to read things now where it's like, hey, you don't just have to lay there and take it. <laughs> you can actually orgasm and here's how. Self-help becomes more popular. Exposés, especially after the Watergate scandal became very popular. And horror stories become a predominant genre, which you see with authors like Anne Rice and Stephen King. I actually have quite a few horror books on my TBR and I didn't realize that it was just a really popular genre in the 70s and that's why I ended up with so many horror books this month until I started looking up history. Also, paperbacks are the new trend in reading in the 1970s. Like, I never really thought about there was a time when all books were hardbacks and those were the only ones you could get, but apparently they became popularized in the 1970s and I learned something new. So sometimes I have theme months. I wasn't actually planning to have a theme month this month, but I kind of accidentally stumbled into one, and that theme is movies. 
every single one of the books that I'm reading this month was turned into a movie of varying popularity and I think just because I can I am going to read the book and watch the movie so my wrap up will contain my feelings about the book versus the movie and you can kind of determine from there. My guess is the book is going to be better than the movie in literally every single case because like 90% of the time the book's better than the movie. So for 1971 I am reading The Exorcist. <laughs> So we're gonna we're jumping straight in with really well well known movies. This is by William Peter Blatty, and it's about a young girl who is possessed by a devil, a demon, a devil, and she receives an exorcism. Uh, I think most of us have seen the movie. I do not care for this movie. For some reason, her crab walking down that stairs, just, I can't take it. I watched it in theaters when I was in high school because they were like re-releasing it after, I don't know, I'm gonna say like 30 years, like a 30 year anniversary of The Exorcist. And I remember that scene came up and I just got out of my seat and left the theater, went to a payphone, called my mom and said, mom, can you pick me up? I don't want to watch this movie anymore. <laughs> Um, 1972 I am reading The Stepford Wives by Ira Levin. This is a book about women who are like the perfect wife and uh, I guess this couple moves to a neighborhood and all the women are like creepily perfect and they're like something is wrong here. Like there's no way that any normal human being would act this like 1950s housewife perfect. Uh, I don't remember, I, I remember seeing the movie with Nicole Kidman but I don't remember why. Like I feel it was like robots or androids or aliens, <laughs> brainwashing. I don't actually remember so we're gonna find out again. For 1973 we're going to read a very unknown book in probably unknown movie but it was made into a movie and that is Once Is Not Enough by Jacqueline Susan. I read the first two books in this series by Jacqueline Susan for the 1960s so I wanted to continue and read the third one. They are a trilogy but there's no like overlap in characters at all so you can pick up the second book or the third book and it has absolutely nothing to do. Like you can read these completely out of order, never like read one of them and never read the other ones. And like I said, there's no overlap at all. This is about a young woman named January Wayne. And she is a rich little country girl who turns into a swinger. So that's a thing. <laughs> and she has daddy issues. And that's really all I know about this. I do know there is a movie. I didn't think all of these books had movies to them because of this book, but when I went to like look up more information because there's barely anything on the back, uh, I found out that it was a movie. But yeah, a girl who has daddy issues and sleeps with a bunch of people. Why not? 1974 is the book that inspired the movie that ruined a billion summers at the beach and that's Jaws by Peter Benchley and it's a book about a killer great white shark. <laughs> that's all I know. I've been to Universal Studios, I've seen the Jaws animatronic, I don't actually think I've act I've sat down and watched the movie. I just know that when I was a kid, if the pool got a little too green and you couldn't see through it, I was concerned 
that there was a scary shark in there that was going to eat me and I didn't want to get into it. Which is absurd, but kids think absurd things all the time. For 1975, I'm reading The Man Himself, Stephen King's Salem's Lot. I'm not a hundred percent sure what this is about, but I believe it's vampires. This is probably the one Stephen King novel that I know like by far the least about, and I like the Goodreads uh like information doesn't tell you anything about the plot and I'm afraid to like dig deeper and get spoiled. So vampires maybe speaking of vampires for 1976 I'm reading Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. Now this is one of the few Anne Rice books that I've never read. I read most of them growing up, but I know I love the movie. Like I started reading Anne Rice's vampire novels because of Interview with a Vampire with Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. Like I love that movie and I knew that everybody who's read the book absolutely hates that movie. And I even know with uh, Queen of the Damned, which I loved that book, the movie Queen of the Damned was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. It had a great soundtrack, but the movie itself was awful. So I was always just too chicken, I guess, to read this book because it was going to ruin my movie. <laughs> and it probably is still going to ruin my movie, but I'm old enough that I'll get over it. 1977, another horror novel, because like I said, there's a lot of horror books in the 1970s. This time it is The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson, and as far as I know this is just a haunted house book. It's like THE haunted house book, um, if I remember correctly. I don't know a whole lot about it other than it's very like poltergeisty haunted house. Next for 1978 is another one of my all-time favorite movies. I love this movie way more than I loved Interview with a Vampire. And if there was any movie in existence that caused me to question my sexuality, it would have been this movie because I have, to this day, a little bit of a crush on both Jared Leto and Jennifer Connelly from this movie. And the book is Requiem for a Dream by Herbert Selby. And this is about drugs. <laughs> um, <laughs> Everybody in this book gets addicted to different drugs, um, but yeah, it's it's a, a dark, if, if the book's anything like the movie, it is dark, which is right up my alley because y'all know how much I like unnecessarily dark things. 1979, I am reading Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews, and this book, like, apparently it was like the ins it was the Hunger Games or the Twilight of 1970s with teenage girls. Like that is the level of book popularity that this book apparently had in the 70s. And as far as I know it's about like a woman who locks her children in the attic because of religion? I don't know. <laughs> Again, it's a very vague synopsis, but most of like, if you look it up on the internet, all you hear about is how popular it is. And for 1980, I'm reading The Born Identity by Robert Ludlum. So we're getting away from the creepy things that I'm reading for most of the year and we're going into like 
thrillers, or not thrillers, we're going into like political thrillers. Um, the Born books set off a whole series of movies with Matt Damon starring in most of them as the titular Jason Bourne. Uh, I liked that movie, but crime thrillers or spy thrillers, I guess is what this is. Not really my type of book, but I know that they were very, very popular through like the late 70s, 80s, and 90s, so I'm probably gonna have to read a few of them. Um, and I figure I like this movie so much, or I enjoy the movie enough that I could probably make it through this book. So we'll see. Like I said, I will be reading all the books and then watching the movies. Some of them obviously will be first time watches and then the ones that I've already seen I'll probably re-watch because I'm not a big movie person and I haven't seen any of these movies in the last 10 to 20 years. <laughs> but that is my TBR for the 1970s. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. Um, if you're excited for me to read any of these, if I'm going to horribly regret reading any of these, if there was another book from the 1970s that you're just super pissed off I am not reading, drop all of that in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.